All right, I'm going to do some model fit and a confirmatory factor analysis, and I'm going to do it start to finish, so bear with me. I'm going to start by building a measurement model based on the pattern matrix that we developed during the EFA. So first things first, go collect our data, or go get our data. I'm using data that has no missing values. I took care of that during my data screening process. You should also have that already taken care of um, before you do model fit in the CFA. When building, for the first latent variable, uh, click and drag to get it to the size you like, and all the sizes after that will be relative to that first size. Okay, we have four factors over here. The first one is for agent trust. Looks like we need one more item there. Second one is for loyalty. We have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. The third one has three. That's for value. Fourth one has four. That's for trust and company. I'm going to rotate all of these to make them easier to work with. There we go, and move them around a bit. Zoom in a little. There we go. Now I'm going to move these back so we can see values when they're present. Oops. Uncheck that. There we go. And then covary them. Good. And then name them. Oops. I had the resize thing on. <laughs> Double-click to, uh, to name them. The first one is for Agent Trust. Second one is for Loyalty. Third one is for Value. And the fourth one is for Company Trust. All right. Now we need to pull in our values. So value goes to here. One, two, three. Loyalty here. We only have one through seven, missing six and eight. Trust in agent goes here. And trust in company here. Oops. Great. Then we need to name our error terms and resize our observed variables. There we go. Go to Analysis Properties, go to the Output tab. We want standardized estimates, residual moments, and modification indices for doing model fit. Go ahead and save it. I'm going to save this as CFA stat wiki. Yes, I want to replace that one. And run. Cross your fingers. Woohoo! It ran. Press the up arrow to freeze it. And we'll just do a real quick visual inspection. We're looking pretty good, actually, when it comes to the loadings. These are really nice high loadings. Uh, these couple issues here in loyalty, a 0.47, a 0.67, those might cause trouble with model fit. Value looks fine. Company trust looks fine. We've got actually very high... Um, covariances, so if we were doing a validity check, uh, we might have discriminant validity issues. But we're doing model fit. So, go to the output. We're going to look at model fit. We see that the C min of DF is just below that upper threshold of 5. So we're probably okay. Um, but the p-value is significant, which means we have poor fit. But we also have a really large sample size, 340 or something like that. And so we might not ever see a good p-value here, or a bad p-value, uh, one above 0.05. Our GFI is eh, tolerable, but not great. AGFI is also tolerable, but not great. CFI is borderline, fine. See, a PCFI, just fine, I guess. Should be really above 0.8 would be nice. Our p-close is not acceptable. It should be above 0.05. And our RMSEA is also not that great. It should be less than 0.1, preferably less than 0.05. So we've got some model fit issues.
the way to discover what they are is to go to modification indices. We go to the top, we deal with covariances during the CFA. Uh, during a causal model, a um, more uh, uh, structural model, where you're testing causal relationships, you would deal with the regression weights first and not deal with the covariances. But during a CFA, you deal with covariances, and you only deal with the covariances between errors, and only the errors that are on the uh, same factor. So, for example, let's go find a big one. Here's 79. That's big. It's from E6 to E7, and we look here. E6 is here on loyalty 5, and E7 is on loyalty 4. We may covary those if we like. Um, in order to improve our model fit because they are on the same factor. What I think I'm going to do first though actually is just remove uh, a couple of these items because they're so uh, they're loading so lowly. So we see that um, loyalty 7 is loading very low. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of it. We have seven or six, excuse me, items there. We're probably okay. Now you'll see that since I remove that one, um, the constrained regression weight is missing from this set. I need to constrain one of them. So I just double click one of these lines here and I set the regression weight to one. I'm constraining it to be one. For some reason Amos requires that. So now that Amos is happy we run it again. If I had not constrained it, it would not run. We look at the values. These values are looking pretty good. Loyalty 4 is a little bit problematic. It's less than 0.7. Um, let's, let's go ahead and leave it in for now. Let's go look at our modification indices and see if we have any big, big ones. Here it is, E6 to E7. Yeah, we can take care of that. Let's go ahead and do that. E6 to E7. Boom. And we run it again. We go look at modification indices and look for big ones. E4 to E17. Can we do that? Here's E4. E17 is way down here on a different factor. We can't do that. We can't covary those. Let's see. E4 to E15. No. E2 to E15. No. So it looks like all the major ones, except maybe this one, E1 to E3, have been taken care of. Let's do E1 to E3 and then look at our model fit. All right. Oops. Model fit. Better. Cmin over DF. Our GFI is still not great, but better. It's approaching that 0.9 level. Our CFI is just fine. PCFI is probably all right. The P close still not good, but our RMCA is better. So this is good. This is much better. Um, the next thing we can do is look at the residuals to see exactly where we have discrepancies between our proposed model and our estimated model. So we go to estimates, matrices, standardized residual covariances. We're looking here for anything that's above 0.4. It looks like loyalty 1 and loyalty 5 are causing a whole bunch of problems. So it looks like loyalty 5 5 is the bigger problem. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of loyalty 5 um, because we can't covary um, variables. So we just have to get rid of it. Loyalty 5, adios. But I got rid of that constraint and I need to add it to another one. There we go. And run it again. Let's see, where did you go? Here we are. We go look at those estimates, matrices, standardized, loyalty one, still very problematic. Ugh. Okay, so we'll go get rid of that. And then we'll check our model fit. Okay, model fit. Seaman over DF, fine. Ah, GFI is up to 0.9. Excellent. CFI is great. RMSEA, it's tolerable. So you know what, I'm gonna call this good. 
Uh, we have a really high sample size, like I said, and it's hard to get great fit when you have a high sample size. There we go.